Zinfandel, they used to, they used to talk about Zinfandel being in two styles, the claret style or the port style. And so like, you know, like no one uses that word claret style Zinfandel anymore, but the claret style was like the 12 and a half alcohol, crunchy, crispy, more red fruited Zinfandel, kind of like what we make at Mathiasen is more of a, we're, our, mm-hmm. our Zinfandel always felt it's like the claret style. But I, in, in the early nineties, when I was just entering the wine industry, there was still old timers talking about claret style Zinfandel. And, um, and, and, um, and that was a style, but then the port and that, and the port style just kind of mostly took over basically. And they don't call it that anymore either. There was this Zinfandel. And so, but it doesn't have to be rich. Zinfandel has different personalities, but I think my understanding is that, is that in the seventies Sutter home was, was working with these Zinfandel vineyards up in the Sierra foothills and was trying to do a richer style of Zinfandel and take it and be, make more of a serious wine. And one of the ways you make a richer wine is once you, after you crush the grapes, you draw some of the juice off so that there's the skin to juice ratio is higher in the, the stuff that you're fermenting because all the, you know, everyone doesn't always know that, that all of the color and the tannin and body and structure of the wine comes from the skins. So the skins float in the fermenting juice, kind of like a tea bag and a brewing, um, you know, Lipton tea or something. And then you, and the, all the color and stuff comes out of the skins. Mm-hmm. So rosé is just, is the juice of red of red grapes fermented away from the skins. So that's like just a fundamental thing. But in this particular case, they were, they were doing this traditional winemaking technique where you crush the grapes, draw some of the juice off so that the resulting wine is richer because you have more, more skin, you know, less juice, yeah. more skins. Yeah, exactly. But then, you know, they didn't want to throw the, the juice away, so they fermented it into that into a wine which was a white Zinfandel instead of a red Zinfandel. And so when, when we get into like the fact that this happened, what was there an actual inspiration where they're like, Hey, I like Provence wines. We're going to do something like that. Or was this completely operating in a different universe? Meaning it wasn't like we're doing what the French are doing with a different kind of grape. Cause I've never heard of a Rose American wine before whites in, I guarantee it existed. I'm not trying to say it didn't, but it wasn't a mass market thing. No. Right. But the thing, I, I, yeah, totally. And but wine producers in California in the seventies knew a lot about European wine, and so so um, like I was just with Warren Winiarski this morning out in the vineyard, um, and um, Warren's in his mid nineties now, and I was just talking to him this morning, and he was telling me about making wine back in the sixties because he was he started in nineteen sixty four in Napa Valley Chateau Souverain, and. He was talking about like we were just talking about the cellar because we're we're rebuilding our winery right now, and he was talking about this back ordered parts to connect the hoses and and the catwalks versus ladders and buckets, and I, and it was just like it hit me so hard that it's exactly the same. 